Ed and Al break into the supposedly deserted Fifth Laboratory. There they encounter two guards who, like Al, have had their souls bonded to suits of armor. And unlike Al, we're total jerks. Al begins to wonder if he is a counterfeit soul created by Ed, and bonded to a suit of armor to become the older boy's biddable puppet. Episode 9, Created Feelings. Oh boy, here we go. Looks like he can sit up now, huh? Yeah, he got really beat up last time. This is no time for me to be lying around in a hospital! Hmm. We, we do, do apologize, apologize in advance, advance for this! this. Huh? You only escaped with your life because you were lucky. You don't have to do everything all on your own, you know. Mm. You can lean on other people. Like us. It's an interesting moment because Ed outranks them, but he's still a kid. And he does take too many things on his own shoulders. That's like his whole MO. It's like everything's my fault and it's my responsibility to fix things for every one and there's a certain temptation to be this way right you can fall into this thinking where you are the least valuable part of the equation but there's a weird sort of arrogance to this because it's a very self-centric view it sort of disregards the feelings of others you know because probably someone like ed provides a tremendous amount of value to certain people like al and i mean everybody here loves him all the whole military loves him ed can't see that value that he provides and he can't see his goodness because he's racked by guilt and also like abandonment his father abandoned him his mother died and so he's unable to see the value that he provides and so he's sort of like trying to self-sacrifice to atone for that which nobody wants there is a gift to leaning on others too because when you lean on others you give them the chance to be supportive which is a good feeling if you actually care about the person but it's hard to account for those feelings and others in yourself i should be apologizing that's very mature my punishment for slapping you nothing i had it coming <laughs> oh, what's got you two so scared of me I guess we were scared of the brat for nothing. They adjust quickly. Um, where's Al? I haven't seen him. Alphonse got his own lecture earlier, but... <laughs> I was about to ask if he slapped him. I have an even less pleasant lecture in store for me today. From Alex Louis Armstrong? Oh. Hello, Rockbell Prosthetic Limb Outfitters. Do you think you could make a service call out to Central for me? Oh no, after she spent three days fixing his arm. So, what were you doing when the arm stopped working? Fighting for my life. Goodbye. Ah, <sighs> uh, was that your girlfriend? My girlfriend! <laughs> sort of. Away! It's nothing to be embarrassed about. When I was your age, I had a different girlfriend every week. Hmm? What are you doing? Okay. Sitting there in the dark by yourself. Brother. You know you can come to the room, right? We got some things to talk about. You go on ahead. Okay. Turn the light on or something, though. No, no more kids. Come on. Don't do this to me. Don't come in here smiling like that. I don't appreciate it. If you're gonna die, just leave. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Are you sure you're not a puppet created by your so-called brother? I'm still trying to figure this out, this whole soul thing. You know, it would be a huge shock, obviously. But just trying to put myself in Al's shoes, I think the biggest shock, if that were true, would not be the fact that my memories were fake. It would be that Ed sort of kept this from me. That, for me, is a bigger transgression because that part is real and it's deceitful. And Ed, if I'm Al, has been my whole world. Ed said to look near the west exit. There'd be someone familiar there who I'd recognize right away. I wonder who it is. That didn't take long. He's gonna get another slap. I won't charge you for this. I didn't do a good enough job on your auto mail last time. It's not your fault. You can't blame yourself for this. You didn't drink your milk. <laughs> Why should I? I hate it. You're going to be small and stunted forever if you keep using that stupid excuse! Shut up! I don't have to drink it if I don't wanna! You sound like a spoiled little friend! <laughs> <laughs> <No. laughs> Girl yes. Boy needs his milk. Yeah, you want the girls to like you, don't you? Girls already like him, come on. When he's trying to grow him up into a prime husband, the tall man of her dreams, I don't think milk's gonna do it at this point. Was that Al? Yeah, we gotta deal with this Al situation. This poor kid. Get out of this dark hallway. Just accept it. You will feel better. Wow, thanks a lot. Sure, no problem. Yo, Ed, my boy! Is it true you brought a pretty blonde girl into your room to service you? Oh my god, phrasing. She's my auto mail mechanic, that's all, nothing more! Oh, I see. You've seduced your mechanic, have you? No! <laughs> that isn't what I said at all! Were you even listening? Just roll with it. I have to 
go and see if I can find some place to stay tonight. Come on. No need for that. Why don't you spend the night at my place? Really? Yes, of course. My wife and daughter will be delighted to have you. <laughs> Happy, Happy birthday, birthday Alicia! Alicia! Today happens to be my darling little Alicia's birthday! I like how he co coerced her into coming to this birthday party. And two! It's big for two. Three. Okay. Jews family. <laughs> awesome. Full metal alchemist. Winry. They don't ever tell me what's going on. It's possible they thought you'd understand without them saying anything. Men prefer to let their actions speak instead of words. When they're in pain, they don't want to burden anyone with it. There may come a time when they'll ask for your help. <laughs> I know that you'll be there for them. Hughes is such a social creature, like, he just loves people. So, in one of the flashbacks we saw, we saw Hawkeye tell Winry that she was willing to kill because she had someone she wanted to protect. And Winry internalized that very strongly. It's really hard to trust things that are out of your hands like that, especially for Ed and Al who are constantly getting hurt and getting into danger. And I think Hughes is right that the brothers just assume she knows their feelings. That's a very human thing, it's not just a man thing, as Hughes suggests. I think people are really smart, like, smarter than we give them credit for, and people can see through us, but the things they see are not necessarily the things we think we're showing. I think it becomes really difficult to see people's intentions when you are emotionally motivated, but it just means a lot to her. So she's going to be naturally sensitive about it. Help is a really tricky thing because sometimes I think our motivations to help people are actually disguises for our desire to get something from others, like feeling needed or feeling loved. And it can be tough to separate that, you know, like what is actually helping. Sometimes what that looks like is sort of like a letting go. It's less of a driving force and more of a willingness, if that makes sense. And I just have a feeling that long term, that's the sort of stance, that's the sort of help that people later come to appreciate the most. Because you remember your low points, you remember when you were really in trouble, and you remember who was there for you when you needed it most. Alicia, we want to play! Let's go! Lots of wind-up toys in this episode. Hey! Okay, She's play your role. Breaker already, isn't she? Oh no! Listen up, boys. You try anything with my daughter, Damn. and you will answer to me. Sissy, be safe, okay? And come back and visit me real soon. Mm -hmm. It's settled. You're staying with us again tonight. <laughs> it looks like I found myself a little sister. Don't get attached. Don't get attached to children. So we meet again, you little bastard. I'm not gonna drink you. <laughs> that moment when you argue with your milk. Mm, I wish I was like you, Al. You've got such a big body now. It's not like I asked for this body, brother! Something on your mind? What should I believe in, my memories? Memories are just scraps of information that can be made up as easily as anything else. Al, uh what are you talking about? Do you remember when you said there was something you were afraid to tell me? I think... I think I might know what it was. Maybe you wanted to say that my soul and my memories are really artificial constructions you created! No, it's not true, is it? What do you have to say for yourself, brother? So you finished? Or is there more you wanted to say? Damn, it hurts extra bad. To see Al talking like this. Al's just the sweetest kid. I'm glad they're having it out now, though. Instead of dragging this out for a million years. Don't go. Where are you going? Ed! No, resolve it. You... <laughs> oh, nice. Finally, he gets hit with a wrench. isn't the type of boy who would resent you for this. Just ask him and I'm sure you'll see. No, I'm, I'm too afraid. I'm too scared of what he'll say. Damn it. <laughs> Damn, Ed's vulnerability hurts extra bad, especially in light of what Hugh said, you know, like he is someone who is really strong and he is someone who doesn't want to show weakness. And he does see himself as someone who has to protect his younger brother. I mean, the guilt from that whole experience just, it's hard to even fathom. It's encouraging to think that maybe this suggests that whole thing was not true, that Al is real. That's kind of what I want. But look at that, here's Winry helping the two of them by facilitating a better understanding. That's cool. Oh, you get it. All the two of you have left is each other. Now, go get your brother. Start running, right? 
Good job, Winry. We haven't had a good fight in a while. I'm starting to get flat. Your wounds haven't healed enough for this. And I beat you. For the first time ever. The first time I ever won. Yeah. Although I mean, I don't know if that was fair. It wasn't a fair fight, brother. Don't yeah. give me that. A win is a win, and you know it, Al. We fought over some really stupid things, haven't we? Definitely. We even fought over which one of us would marry Winry someday. Ooh. I won the fight, but she shot me down. Huh. Good Points for trying. This is so heartwarming. We're in this together all the way. Don't forget that. And we're gonna keep pushing forward. We'll make ourselves stronger, faster, and better until we get our bodies back. <laughs> and the milk? Milk? Fine, I'll drink a little. <laughs> Whatever it takes, brother. Damn, that's the most heartwarming thing I've ever seen. <laughs> what the hell? What more do you need? I mean, a body would be nice. <laughs> the other day I was thinking about one of my longest term goals, which is this idea I've had that I, I want to be free. And what I've always meant by that is I want to be free from doing things I don't want to do. I don't want to, I want to be free from having an employer. I want to be free to travel wherever I want. I want to be free to spend the time however I want. And I've been so fixated on this idea for so long. And recently this sort of got to a boiling point where I felt like I wasn't making progress. There was a moment where I was sort of questioning if that's ever possible or if I'm ever going to get what I want. But even more terrifying is if that'll even feel as good as I think it will feel. And then the realization dawned on me and it was kind of a beautiful moment that I'm already free. It's like, I already have most of the things that I really need and most of the things I really want. And it's sort of an illusion to think that something else, you know, some financial or material state will give me more than I have now. Like I have so, I have so much. This made me think of that because it's like, you know, Ed and Al are so focused on their goals, right? It keeps them going, keeps them moving, but they already have like the greatest thing of all, which is themselves and each other. Because they're both such special people. They're both smart, talented, hardworking, kind, and loving to each other. And it's such a beautiful thing. It's like, they're good. They're good. Ed's guilt is sort of an illusion. I mean, the body thing is key, right? The body thing is important. I'm not saying that they shouldn't strive for that. But it's like the anxiety, the emotion behind it is sort of superfluous. There's beauty in their lives now. And like that moment is such a good demonstration of that. It's a really beautiful scene. Mr. Hughes, maybe you don't have to hear something out loud, but it sure is helpful sometimes. I guess it is. Everyone learned something that day. Hey! You don't look like an Ishvalan. Who are you? I'm a state alchemist sent here by the military. I've been sent to exterminate this sector. Oh, that's Scar. This is a flashback. You're among friends now. Who are you? You, old man. Me? Why, I'm a man of Ishvala, just as you are, son. The world is God's bosom. Our great loving god Ishvala. Am I right? <laughs> yes, you certainly are. Scar is sort of getting a sympathetic treatment here by the show. We see the flashback and, I mean, Scar was not the villain in that. And, you know, these people are obviously really kind. And so his being there and communicating with them sheds a nice light on him. It's interesting. Your tattoo. It's really amazing. Yes. It's important to me. A precious gift from my family. His family who died. Man, what an episode. That was emotionally packed. I'm kind of happy we addressed this is our real thing quickly. And it led to a really beautiful moment. It was worth it for that reflection on who they are and what they bring to each other's lives. And I think it was a really great touch having Winry be involved in all that, especially after the conversation with Hughes. Overall, it was like a really well put together episode. There's so many great, beautiful things about it. But anyway, that's the end of episode nine. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you very soon for episode 10.